There's a woman who shares a story about a, a visitor that arrived at her home one day. She lived across the street from a major medical center. And some of the houses in her neighborhood used to have rooms that they would, um, they would rent if somebody was undergoing treatments and th they needed a place to stay. Well, one day, a man um, w went to her next door neighbor's home, and he was looking for a room. And usually, the neighbors um, did um, rent out rooms. But the man looked um, very weathered. He um, um, looked like he uh, didn't have two cents to rub together. He um, seemed very worn and tired. And at first, I think they thought that he was the, the neighbors thought that maybe he was just somebody who was just kind of going from place to place. So they told him they had no room and sent him away. Then he went to the next house thinking that maybe he might find room there. And the same thing happened until he arrived at this woman's home. And um, at that point, he'd given up hope of finding room and just asked whether or not it would be possible that he could sleep in a shed they had behind the house. Well, she took a look at him and um, knew that he um, probably had faced a number of challenges. And they did have a room in their basement. And so she decided that she was going to let him stay. He didn't have to pay anything for the room. It was just um, a, a favor. Because there was something that she sensed that this man um, just needed a place to stay and needed an act of kindness. Well, he stayed the night and then woke up the next morning she served him breakfast, and he was going to be on his way. But he asked if the next time he was getting treatment, if he could stay at her home. And she, uh, she agreed. And about once a month, he would come by. One thing that he um, always did when he arrived, he would stop at the house before he went to the hospital because he was a fisherman. And he would always uh, bring something that he had caught. And so they, um, every time he came by, they knew they were going to have um, fresh fish or maybe fresh oysters or clams or whatever it was that he happened to have. Then he'd come back and then he'd enjoy dinner with the family. And little by little, she began to learn all sorts of things about him. One, that he should have been retired and retired for many years, but he'd gone back to work and gone back to backbreaking work because his, his daughter had uh, five children, and her husband was injured at work. So he was needed to support the family. He also was having um, treatment for medical condition. He spoke about that. He spoke about the wife that he loved so much, who had passed. And she, he started offering, in many ways, too, advice to the, the children. And this woman and her husband ended up seeing him as a treasured friend. And they also started noticing something, too. They began to appreciate their life a bit more. They began to see the, the ways that their life was blessed. They also um, learned lessons about uh, facing challenges, just as he shared tales of his life. She uh, just kind of looked at him and saw that he had a certain credibility. Eventually, his treatments were completed. He wasn't stopping by to visit as often. Every now and then, there'd be Christmas cards in the mail or some kind of a note, and they'd send notes back and forth. But she always appreciated the gift of friendship of this man. And she always um, remembered very fondly the old fisherman. And then after the first reading today, we hear a fisherman, we don't know exactly how old he was, speaking beautifully about the joy of the, the, the resurrection. And he's speaking on that first day of Pentecost. Pentecost being 50 days after Easter. And you know, so often when we see a painting or perhaps a movie inter um, interpretation of the scene, you see very young and uh, energetic and excited Peter. But you know, if you think about it, 50 days after Easter would have also been maybe about 53 days after the cross, 53 days or so after Peter's denials, 53 days after seeing such great um, blows to Jesus' humanity, 
as he suffered and died on the cross. Then the resurrection came. And that, of course, upended things. But they really weren't quite sure of what to make of the resurrection either. You know, we hear accounts that the two of them left um, Jerusalem. They were kind of hovered in the upper room. And it took a, quite a few appearances before they realized that Jesus Christ was risen. So I think that, you know, when we think about that, the Peter who was speaking was probably somebody who had seen some blows in life, had seen some challenges, made mistakes and learned from them, but also saw the glory of the resurrection. And he was very excited to tell this tale of Jesus being, being risen from the dead. And maybe as we're hearing the story again, this Easter season, and the other stories that we associate with Easter, maybe things are going very well, and the joy of Easter is very present in our hearts, and that's wonderful. Maybe we're facing um, different challenges, and things are rather difficult. But whatever we're facing, let the joy of Easter come into our lives and hearts and do great things as we celebrate the greatest miracle of all times, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which changes and makes everything new.